Hi, I'm Vicki Wakefield. Um, my new novel, Friday Brown, is about a girl who's grappling with her mother's death and trying to find out where she belongs in the world. I'm picking up on um, chapter one. Friday's mother has died and she's leaving her grandfather's house in the middle of the night. The night air was cold and still. I hoisted my backpack and buttoned my jacket. Grandfather's cat wound between my legs and beseeched me with lime-coloured eyes. I ran my hand along its rippling spine. The feel of it, so alive, made my eyes ache. I took my hand away and the cat wailed and slashed the air with its tail. Shh, I hissed and stomped my foot. The gravel crunched underneath. I looked back at the house. In another life it could be a country house from an Enid Blyton book or rambling garden and dappled sunlight and hidden treasure, fond cousins and lashings of lemonade with the odd mystery or midnight feast. It was a house made for happy endings, but there I was, standing in the dark with a yowling cat, everything I owned crammed into a backpack. I was the sum of two people, one dead, the other unknown. I'd lived a hundred, in a hundred small towns, and I'd never known another person for my whole life, except Vivienne. Every memory before this was sweet and real. But now she'd got it wrong. This wasn't my future. Her legacy should be more than a string of pearls and a grandfather I didn't know. Vivienne taught me that life was short, and if it wasn't sweet, you were in the wrong place with the wrong people. Time to go, Friday Brown, she'd say, and so the next chapter would begin. Sometimes it would be a whisper in the dark, and I would feel her broken heart beating against my back. Other times a casual aside in conversation, as if she, it had just occurred to her that we had somewhere else to be. We craved new beginnings. Suddenly the sensor lights flicked on and I was drowning in brightness. I blinked and raised my arm up over my eyes. An upstairs window flew up. For a second I saw my mother there framed in a halo of light, but it was just him, grandfather, with his old man's hair gone static and wild. He frowned, fists braced against the sill. I had the sensation of time winding in a loop. He stared at me. I stared at him. I knew I'd be away before I even got to the landing, but still I felt trapped in his glare. He lobbed something at me. A bundle the, brick, the size of a half brick that fell short and tumbled to my feet. He nodded at it and regarded me carefully as if what I did next would give him some measure of me. I picked it up, felt its weight in my palm, caught the scent of new ink. A wad of fifties bound in rubber bands. Hundreds of them. Probably more than ten thousand dollars. I thought of Vivienne turned away from here with nothing. My lifetime ago. And I made my choice. It was a choice based on stupid pride and dumb loyalty and it would change everything. I threw the bundle onto the porch, turned my back and started walking. I had a purse with my own money, enough to start over. If there's one thing I knew, one thing I could do without a map, with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back, it was starting over. Except this time I had to do it on my own. The sensor lights flicked off, clouds of breath, numbness in my fingers and toes, a pale slice of moon through a sickly light just enough to see by. When I reached the front gates, I looked back. He was gone. The windows were dark and shuttered. Grandfather was letting me go.